today we are going to do some photogrammetry, for some serious business, right? There's not a hell of a lot around us that is very exciting to do. I uh, had a couple of options that I think could be kind of cool. Turns out there's children everywhere. Um, it's, it's a gaggle of children all over the place. Don't want to be dealing with that. So we're going to find a more suitable location. Hopefully something that, I don't know, would be cool for a model. You know, the goal here, fly the drone, do photogrammetry, get a nice model, 3D print it. I have a abandoned campsite in mind, which I think uh, could be kind of exciting. So let's get into it. Sky. Seems like others have our ideas. <laughs> Not today. We'll take them down, Kamikaze style. Don't do that. Yeah, we're responsible drone pilots. Yeah. We find ourselves in the wilds of the UK, a dangerous place coming from the African bush. Yeah, this <laughs> this doesn't even compare. We are. We are really out there. I think the cop's only about a minute away, but it's dangerous, man. That's that's when you know. That's when you know you, you've got nothing, you know, but we've got our trusty drone. Yeah, we can scout ahead, see what's happening, see if the uh, the gaggle of youths have made their way to us. Um, hopefully we'll be safe. Site, uh, which is closed over the winter period. Uh, it should be a quite an interesting little site to, to do some photogrammetry on. There's the main evolution block over there, there's some of the electrical stands for there's some of the caravans, a lot of weird sort of anomalies, some cool trees, uh, which might make for an interesting model. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Done with our uh, a little photogrammetry mission. Hopefully, it turns out all right. Uh, the sunlight was not the most conducive to uh, uh, a photogrammetry mission, but uh, we'll we'll process the data and, and see if it's if it's cool. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Okay, welcome back to uh, my stair bedroom, the laboratory. Uh, did things go to plan? No. Yes. Maybe. Kinda. Um, I think before we jump into to anything else, uh, let's cue the montage of data processing, because it's going to be sick.
All right, so now that we've got all that processed, the keen-eyed among you uh, will have noted that the uh, campground model did not exactly go to plan. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. I think the most important one is that when you're using a CMOS image sensor, uh, which is pretty much every drone, um, and you're trying to capture 3D data, you know, you need to be very cognizant of things like uh, uh, vegetation, uh, any grass, uh, thick grass, um, you know, uh, branches, hedges, things like that. Uh, it poses a real challenge because it can't sense the depth. Um, and equally, reflective surfaces, be that water, you know, um, you know, a windscreen on a car, what, whatever it is, glass, um, it has a real tough time at, uh, at being able to, to then produce a good quality 3D model. So when you get into Agisoft and you align your photos, you get your, your sparse cloud and your, you know, you need to be able to clean that data. If you don't clean your data properly, you end up with, you know, floating blobs and, you know, weird erroneous points. And, you know, certainly from an accuracy point of view, if you're using GCPs, ground control points and, and try to make an accurate uh, model, um, it's no good to have weird floating points um, in, in any direction, really. Uh, you want things to be nice and consistent, as accurate to, to be at the ground level, the surface level, whatever it is. Um, you know, and in this case, it did not, it did not do that particularly well. Um, you know, the, the flat surfaces, quite cool, when I'm looking at this model and you can, and you know, I'll sort of uh, clip in a, a, a little bit of another montage, just show, showcasing the prints themselves. Um, you'll note that the, uh, the actual stands themselves for the caravans and, and things like that, yeah, they, they did quite a good job. Uh, but because, you know, there was a, a, a great big tree next to the ablution block, um, it created a nice big hole. And that's disappointing, very disappointing indeed. Um, you know, and yeah, it sucks, but am I happy with it? I'm ecstatic. This is the coolest little thing in the world. Um, being able to actually see, um, you know, something that you've just gone out, flown your drone, uh, captured a whole bunch of images, processed it, yeah, and then being able to send it off to a printer and printed it. Here it is. Here's the campground. You know, I think that is one of the coolest things um, ever. Even if it's it's not the best little model, um, I'm still very happy with it. In fact, I'm so happy. Um, well. My partner Ad is very happy because now we have a home for our little cat. Um, oh, come back, come back. Um, is it to scale? No. Uh, or maybe it is. I don't know. Could be a ferocious little beast. Um, but you know, it's 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 done a pretty good job when in, as a model. Um, I've lost my train of thought there. Let's bring it back. I was fixated on the little cat. Um, but the K1 Max did a did such a fantastic little job at, uh, at being able to print this. Um, as you will see, like I, I did not change too many settings apart from, you know, generating support, um, you know, uh, speed and, and sort of infill, things like that. Um, you know, by and large, it did such a, such a good job of just sort of plugging and playing. Um, but because this one is not as fantastic as I would have hoped it to be, uh, I have included Another model that I printed out. Um, this one was captured with a Mavic 3 Enterprise drone. Um, this is just a portion of a much larger, <laughs> larger server that I did for work. Um, yeah, but when you're using, and this leads into the next point, when you're using mission planning, sometimes things become a little bit easier. Um, when I flew this with the, the Air 2S, did not use any mission planning. This was all flown manually, taking photos, uh, having a jolly old time. Um, but it's really important when you're trying to generate 3D data to be able to you know, capture things like the oblique angles, uh, to be able to capture consistent data, consistent height data, um, you know, and no, you don't need to, to invest in some mission planning software. Uh, I'm looking at you drone deploy. Um, it doesn't need to be that expensive, but it is. And you know, yes, you can use drone link, which is a little bit cheaper, but um, I've had some issues with drone link, certainly on my Air 2S, um, where the uh, camera feed just, just, it was non-existent. Um, but mission planning does make things a little bit easier. Uh, using Pilot 2 in this instance to, to capture most of the data, um, it did a phenomenal job at, at capturing the data and even processing this was, uh, I nerded out because it was so much fun. Um, but it produced consistent data and even, we, you know, this was using uh, ground control points and RTK, network RTK. Um, combination of the two and got down to, to just under a centimeter of accuracy. 
um, which is really good. I, I was you know, chuffed to bits you know, with, with how everything turned out. Um, is this field the most exciting to look at? No, but it had a really interesting slope, yeah? And this, this slope we needed to, yeah, we were trying to do a topographic survey on it, um, but it was a little bit challenging to, to actually walk up and down um, you know, with, the, uh, with the GPS itself to capture that topographic data. Um, that's where the power of drones comes in, you know? Um, to capture those sorts of data sets is, is, well, it's pretty revolutionary and it's, it's such a fun thing to get into and it's, it's, it's an industry that's expanding now. So, you know, being, and, and then, you know, taking a step further and being able to print it, oh man, this is, this is, I'm as giddy as can be, because uh, it is, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I think, you know, do I want to, um, you know, sort of tackle this project again? Absolutely. Um, I want to, to take out my drone, maybe to the seaside, maybe to, to a historic uh, historic building out there, maybe something that's uh, a monastery that's been destroyed, um, and capture the same sort of data. Um, I'd like to, to invest in something like Drone Deploy or Drone Link to, to, to be able to mission plan a little bit better. Um, and if you've got any suggestions, let me know. Uh, something that might be free or, or certainly very cheap, um, because I think it does make a little bit of a difference, certainly when you're trying to you know, trying to be a responsible drone pilot and concentrate on your drone itself. I always fly with a spotter, um, you know, especially when you do need to concentrate on your screen the whole time. It's important to know, you know, have some wherewithal and uh, know, know what you're doing. Um, drone laws in the UK are, you know, quite, no, well, they're not the strictest, but uh, you do need to be cognizant of what you're doing, um, you know. And so, you know, I, I do want to have some level of mission planning to be able to at least make my life a little bit easier. Um, you know, and capture that oblique data, capture, you know, orbital missions, uh, capturing sort of cross-hatch flights. Can you do it manually? Yes, and that's kind of what the point of this is, is that, you know, pretty much anyone with a drone, um, you know, can go out there, um, even a little Mini 2 SE drone or whatever it may, one of the mini drones, you, you can capture this sort of data. Um, and, you know, there's, there's lots of different, um, you know, uh, photogrammetry processing softwares out there, uh, be it Pix4D, Agisoft, um, you know, Drone Deploy even sort of has their own sort of uh, version you know, built into to there's the cloud processing, uh, site scan which runs off the, the back end of, of Pix4D. Um, but they've all got trial versions, so I, I implore you, you know, if, you, if you're if you keen on this, you know, go out, fly your drone, capture some data, um, you know, get, get a trial version of uh, be it Agisoft or Pix4D, whatever it is, and process it. And, uh, and and see what you see what you come up with. Uh, I'd be be super keen to to know more about about those sorts of projects. Um, so yeah, we will tackle this. We will come to this in the future and hopefully uh, produce better results. Uh, I've got a couple of things in mind for for what's coming down the pipeline. Um, but until then, bye.